Hello and welcome to another uh, online presentation. Uh, what we're going to be looking at here is how easy it actually is to set up a system for doing testing of uh, the Zen Server Cluster Manager. And when I say easy, I should probably say extremely easy. Um, the way we're going to set this up here is um, <clears throat> I've got an installation here of uh, CentOS running. Um, and I've got enough RAM on the system, I mean it's only about 6 gigs or so and I've got about 3 gigs dedicated to this one. Uh, so what we're going to do, or to this virtual machine, uh, what we're going to do is create um, more virtual machines and basically set up uh, Zen Server Cluster Manager in several, several Zen Server um, instances, well we'll only do one for the time being, um, to show you know, how you can actually set it up. I mean it's actually pretty easy. And to show you how easy it is, I'm going to have a stopwatch. Um, what this will do is I'll just keep it running through the entire installation process, um, but we'll see how long it actually takes to run. I'll probably pause in the middle, because um, otherwise you'll be watching a lot of dead time. <laughs> Not exactly the most uh, fun thing, but I'll keep the stopwatch running, and you'll see exactly how long it'll take for me to get this actually up and running. So I'm going to start right now by clicking Start. So the first thing I'm going to go into here is I'm going to go into my virtual machine manager. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Uh, we'll just click on forward. I'm going to call it Zen 1. Uh, we'll take all the defaults. We'll state that it's going to be a Linux machine and it's going to be uh, Enterprise Linux 5.4. And the first thing we're going to do is set up an installation media. Uh, this is uh, the URL that you use to actually download the OS. Um, if you look here, you see that I have um, uh, another mirror set up, but this is going over the internet and I wanted to do it quickly, so I set up a local repository, which basically does exactly the same thing. So I'll click on forward. Um, we're going to allocate, allocate four gigabytes of space. That's where our image will be. We'll hit forward and we're going to set up a um, bridged network. Uh, you could do either one, doesn't really matter. I'm just doing bridge because it's easier to access from my uh, local desktop. Hit forward, we're gonna give it four CPUs. Um, hit forward again and hit finish. So it's just creating, uh, creating this right now. We'll uh, maximize it. And so what this is gonna do is it's uh, setting up the, uh, well, it's already downloaded and installed a couple of things. We'll do all, take all the defaults here. We've got an IP address. Now it's going to be downloading the stage2.img file. This is going to be doing it off of uh, my local repository that I have set up here. Uh, this is, I think, about a 140 meg file or so. So even over a local uh, network, it goes pretty, uh, you know, it's not instantaneous, but it's you know, still pretty quick. Um, setting up the... Uh, let me see, let me move this down a little bit because I think I'll need the bottom of the screen. So this is now our guest virtual machine. And we'll just hit next. And yeah, we'll remove all this stuff. It won't find any installations. Next again. And we'll state that it's going to be called Zen 1 just because it's got a nice, you know, easy way of accessing it. We'll just use the defaults there and hit next. After we're creating our password, we don't need a desktop on here, so we'll deselect this and hit next again. So now it's just going through, making sure that all the packages that it needs to install have all the dependencies set up. And we hit next again, or we try to hit next. There we go, hit it next, and now it's basically downloading and installing the system. So this is uh, going to be going on, this will take a couple of minutes. Um, we see that we're now at about three, uh, yeah, approaching three minutes. So while it's doing that, we're going to log back in over here, and we're actually going to set up Zen Server Cluster Manager. Uh, the way you do that, you uh, set up a couple of yum repositories. And this is what that will actually look like. And to install Zen Server Cluster Manager, we'll type in yum install Zen Server Cluster Manager. So this will download off of the Zen.com website. We've got about 26 megs. It's actually a relatively lightweight package to uh, uh, for the management aspect of it. 
So this is going on at the same time, on actually on the same machine as our installation process here, which is still uh, chugging along. It'll probably take a couple of minutes. So we're installing that, and um, we'll just kind of uh, wait here for a moment. I actually have uh, uh, some leftover, I think some leftover data here. This might actually go on the Zen Server Cluster Manager side a little bit quicker, uh, but we'll... Uh, just check about that. And I might actually just remove a couple of things here just to make it uh, a little closer to what you'll actually end up seeing. Or not, we'll see. Just let this finish up. Like again, I said there's a fair amount of stuff going on. Let's just uh, see if MySQL is running. Yeah, MySQL is running, so we should actually. Uh, be good here. So what I will then do is I will go to then server cluster manager uh, dot local. All right, so we have our end user agreement, which I of course agree to. Hit next, and I'll set my password. Hit next. Then here we got to set up our license keys. I've got a license key up and running here. So we need to have one for Zen Server Cluster Manager and then another one for the individual nodes. Don't need to be notified. At least I don't. <laughs> uh, Zen Server CM, or Zen Server CM .local is the name of our database host. You, I've actually gone through this in a previous uh, uh, video, so if you want to see more information, you can you know, go there and see that. Oops, can I create the user as Zen already ex exists? All right. Then that's uh, MySQL. And um, actually, no, let's just kind of wipe out the entire thing. Service MySQL D stop. This is actually kind of good because it takes a couple of minutes for uh, this to actually finish up. So I'll just go here and I'll create a completely uh, brand new installation. All right, service MySQL D start, which should then initialize the database. Then I need to uh, do some, uh, add some additional privileges on here. Again, you don't necessarily want to follow exactly as we're doing this here, and I give reasons in my previous video. Hit next. And now we're um, actually pretty much ready to go. Uh, so the only thing that we're waiting on then is uh, CentOS here, and this will, it says here it takes about six minutes, and so far we're at, well, six and a half. So why don't I uh, just hang out here for a little bit, and uh, once this is done, we'll uh, continue on.